Today I will show you how to make VLANs, access ports and uh, trunks in Aruba CX switches. Have you tried turning it off and on again? We are going to use GNS3 for this demonstration. If you don't have it up and running, you can watch my video uh, top right here, how to set up GNS3. It can be a bit tricky, especially to have it running with yeah virtualization security off so i highly recommend if you have some trouble watch the video especially the end of the video because i'm doing some troubleshooting in the end but okay so we are going to use a ruba switch a pc we are going to run it on the gns3 vm and we can actually just right click and duplicate this pc okay so we have two pcs and a ruba switch now we are going to link them, so I will put PC1 on port 1, PC2 on port 2, so it's easy to remember where we put the links. We are also going to start them, so with the big green play button to start them. We can rename this one just for management, so it's easier to remember. We are going to put in another switch later on to demonstrate how the trunking works also. But okay, so we have a switch running and two PCs. If we double click on PC1, we can go into the console here. We can do show IP and it's going to be blank, just zeros. But we can manually set an IP if we just type IP. And for this lab, we can do in the private range of 10.0.0 have the first PC on 101 and if you just hit enter here it's actually going to suggest a class C subnet or dash 24 or 255 255 255 zero many ways to say it so now we have the IP address of 10.0.0.101 and we can do the same for PC2 if we double click on this one we can do IP, but on this one we instead do 10.0.0.10. So it's not going to find any duplication on this subnet. So now the virtual PCs are actually done for. Uh, next time we open up them, we are just going to test the connectivity. But first we need to actually configure the Aruba switch. And the same goes here. I have a video on how to get the Aruba OS CX into GNS3. So I can, I can link it here top right for you. I will double click on the Aruba switch to bring up the console. It's totally factory reset. So switch login is going to be admin. Password is going to be blank. So just hit enter here. It's going to ask for a new password. I will just hit enter again to keep it blank for now. The configuration on the switch. Let's check how it's actually running right now. So show running config hit enter and here we can see we have not much configuration just the user ntp ssh default vlan 1 interface and if we hit space we also have a web server running so it's very sparse to begin with but there are some important elements especially if we look at interfaces so if we go show interface brief we can see that these ports are actually now in a routed mode and that's okay if you're doing a more advanced lab for layer 3 switching but we are going to stick to layer 2 for now. We can also see that they are down. I will hit Q. I will go into configuration terminal. I will select all the interfaces. 1 slash 1 slash 1 to one slash one slash and then this image is 52 ports here i will type no routing to actually put the interfaces in access mode instead and while i'm here i will also do no shutdown to enable the interfaces if we exit out of the interfaces and do some up arrow and again show interface brief we can actually see that they are now on their native VLAN 1 access mode 
enabled, yes, and they're up. So this is actually exactly how I want them. And here we can see that it's one to 10 that are regular interfaces. Now the fun begins how to actually make or enable the switch to handle different VLANs. It's not very complicated actually. What you have to do is to make the VLAN, is to type VLAN and then the ID, so something between 1 and 4096, I believe it is. We can just go with VLAN 123 for test this purpose. And here we can actually name the VLAN. Maybe you want to yeah, talk about or document the VLAN in another way in just a, a number. Maybe it's VLAN uh, one two three, but the name could be one two three and uh, IT. Maybe it's the VLAN for the IT department. So we have created the VLAN. We have named the VLAN. We go exit out of the VLAN configuration here. And now it's time to actually bind this VLAN to some ports. By default, all the ports are now access port for VLAN 1. We want to use VLAN 1, 2, 3. And if we remember the different PCs, they're actually on port 1 and port 2 of the switch. We can also check this by going top right on the topology summary. Here if we expand the Aruba, we can see port 1 goes to PC1, port 2 goes to PC2. So we are going to have the VLAN be in access mode on those two ports. What we can do is type int 1 slash 1 slash 1 to 1 slash 1 slash 2. Then we have selected those two interface and to use the VLAN 123 in access mode we are going to type VLAN access and just the VLAN ID. We also want to do a trunk. We are going to exit out of these two interfaces and now instead we will go with one interface 1 slash 1 slash 3 which Further on is going to be a trunk port to another switch. To trunk this VLAN into the trunk port, we type VLAN trunk allowed. And here we can specify which VLANs are actually enabled through Traverse over this VLAN trunk. Maybe not all VLANs, or maybe you actually want all VLANs, even further ones that you create to be able to go over this trunk. And if you are just typing VLAN trunk allowed 1 to 3, then the VLAN 1 to 3 will be the only VLAN to go over this trunk. But if you instead type all here and enter, VLAN 1 to 3 and all other VLANs that you create in this switch will also be able to go over this trunk. We will exit out of the interface. And we will remember to do the most important thing, write memory to actually save this configuration. Okay, so let's actually try the connectivity between PC1 and PC2. They are on the same VLAN, they have the same setup, same access port. So we are going to ping from PC1 to PC2. And we can see there's no problem at all with the connectivity between the two PCs. So a bit of a scenario, your maybe the place that you're administrating, they are buying a new house, it's expanding, and you need to connect uh, your VLANs to another site, another building. It could be a 50 meter ethernet cable or actually some fiber cable, maybe a kilometer apart. So what we will do is actually save not only the switch config, but also the PC config. So if we type save here and save here, we have now saved everything. With that, we can actually do a power off. So it says stop all nodes. And we are now going to demonstrate how the trunking works. I will move this down a bit, right click and duplicate 
and we can see it actually did Aruba 2, PC4, PC3, but we need to add links. So I'm going to do similar to the other setup, port 1, port 2, and port 3 is going to be the trunk port between the different devices. We will hit play to start all the devices. And now we can go into PC3 and if we type IP 10.0.0.103 and then on PC4 we can do IP 10.0.0.104 and now we can see if PC4 in one building are able to connect to PC1 so we will do ping 10.0.0.101 and they can. So this is usually how you connect subnets or VLANs on different floors or buildings even with different switches. That was how to configure VLANs on the Aruba OS CX in GNS3. Hope you guys liked it. Subscribe for more content like this. And uh, take care. Bye bye.